Thank you for joining us at Creative Church. We pray that this word blesses your heart and blesses your life. And if it has, I want to encourage you to feed what's feeding you and to give to what's giving to you. The easiest way to do this is to visit creativechurch.com slash give. Thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure to click on the notifications so you never miss an encouraging word from Creative Church. Praise the Lord. Pastor Joanne's here. Yeah. We're kicking off our series today, Raising Parents. Joanne's in the Lord's Army. <laughs> Anybody remember that song? They were making fun of me backstage, guys. I was like, you're in the Lord's Army. I'm in the Lord's Army. Yes, sir. I'm going to start making fun of your outfits when you're up here. I know. I just can't help it. Okay, Lieutenant. Um, hey, we've got our very first Creative Church yearbook. Very first Creative Church yearbook. And it is, um, 2020 was a very challenging year uh, in so many different ways. And so uh, we felt that it was only appropriate to start on uh, 2020. And it's the year that we, uh, you know, renamed the church and everything. God gave us a fresh vision for what he wanted to do in this next season and opening up our Maple Grove campus and everything. So um, it's just packed full of uh, moments. moments and it's the God moments, some of the God moments that God's done in our life in 2020. So we're going to be doing this every year. And so I just thought, how cool is it? You know, something we're given, all of us are giving our life to, we're giving our resources to, our families involved in, to be able to look back one day at all the years of the things that God had done. How many people think that's pretty cool? So we have a very limited quantity. We did not order a lot of them. Uh, you can pick it up. Um, I think they're only 40 bucks out there and we left room in it. Uh, we're giving them to you guys. I think just like, I think it's like five or six dollars over cost. And uh, those extra five or six dollars are going to our orphanage in Guatemala to help orphans. Somebody say amen about that. So it's a very limited quantity of it. And we left room in there for people to uh, write prophetic words. And so um, we wanted the church to, um, you know, write in each other's yearbooks and prophesy uh, prayers and scripture over each other. So I thought that was pretty cool. And so we're going to jump into this today. We want to encourage you guys to take notes. And uh, let me just uh, start off uh, also by saying that uh, you know, Joanne and I have been asking God about, you know, this, this topic on parenting. We, do not, we don't feel qualified. No, not at all. To speak on this. I'm like, our kids aren't done. Our kids aren't <laughs> done yet. And we're not up here telling you, hey, we're great. We know how to handle this. We're amazing. And, you know, so don't look at your children and, and, and your family and think, oh, we need to be like that or we need to do. Uh, I do think when we talk to people who are further than us, there is a conviction. Mm -hmm. There's not a condemnation, though. Yeah. But there is a conviction to that says, do, I want to do better. I want to strive to be better. I want to, you know, raise my kids to reach their potential. And so that's our heart today. And so we didn't come up with everything that, that, that we do with parenting. We look, we study, we read, we ask. Uh, we value the opinions of those who have gone ahead of us, and especially as we are now embarking into uh, having multiple teenagers in the house, Lord, we're going to have a lot of a lot of teenagers in the house. The I'm already getting ready time. to hang vines up in the house for their mood swings. But um, it's it is it, we don't we don't have it all figured out. So I just want to make that disclaimer. And um, uh, I don't know that we'll also hit every single family dynamic. You know, I realize that there's a lot of different dynamics in the home and, and, and everybody doesn't have a mom and a dad and, you know, two kids and a dog named Toto and a white picket fence. Like everybody's not in that situation. Uh, but, you know, in everything that we do, one of the things that we've learned is, you know, you eat the fish and you spit out the bones. You take the parts that apply to your life and the rest of the parts, you know, maybe God gives it to you to share with others. And so this is going to help you whether you have grown children, whether you're dealing with teenagers, kids, whether you're not, uh, you know, you, you just got married and you're looking at starting a family or you're like, you know, a young adult and you're going, you know, I'm not even married, but this is great information for me to have 
you know, when I do have kids. So, or you know somebody whose kids are a disaster and you need to tell them some of the information you learn. You need to at least share this with them, right? Uh, and or so, just change yourself. I mean, what we're talking about is interpersonal change that we need to happen anyways. Absolutely. And everybody, everybody thinks they can parent till they're a parent. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, you're like, well, I was a kid once. Mm-hmm. You know, so I know how to, you know, deal with kids. I was a kid. Which is silly. That's like saying I had surgery, so I know how to operate. <laughs> you know, it's just makes no sense. There's a big difference between having a surgery and performing a surgery. There's a big difference between, you know, making money and managing money. That's right. A lot of people can make it, but they can't manage it. There's a, there's a big difference between making a kid, well, and managing one. Mm-hmm. You know? You're like, well, I don't you know, I maybe thought about this a little more if I, you know, there's a price to pay. A lot of people just like the first half of that. They like that first half, <laughs> you know. I don't even like kids, you know. <laughs> I like Pastor Joanne. I don't even like kids. I got eight of them, you know. So. You love your kids. I know. <laughs> but, but it's, uh, but I, I do, I do love Pastor Joanne, uh, you know, as the, the focus, we, we do not have a kid-centered marriage. We have a, we have a spouse-centered marriage. You know, no, our, kids the, are the, our kids are secondary. In the beginning, I did have it kid-centered, where the boys were my priority, and then I had to switch that because God convicted me that he needed to be my priority, and they were secondary. Yeah, and, that's, and that is something that, you, husbands, you need to ask God, you know, if your wife doesn't have that, ask God to reveal that. You know, because if God reveals it, it's gonna, she'll change instantly. That's right. You know, when you say it, it's like, it's not true. You know, but if, but if God says it, you know, it's going to work. And so you need to pray. That's the biggest thing. If you're dealing with an issue with your spouse, the best thing to do is to pray for them. Mm-hmm. And ask God to reveal those things, you know, to them. But, but I lined all the kids up once. I told them, look, your mother is the only one of y'all I chose. <laughs> Except Liliana. I didn't even choose her, but I'll take her. See? <laughs> but, but she's the only one I chose. The rest of y'all, I didn't choose you, you know, but God chose you to be here. And so we're, you know, we're stuck with you. So, <laughs> but, but just, you know, have an open heart when it comes to this. Be coachable. Um, you know, don't be offended in these things. You know, the things that we're going to share with you guys are there to encourage you, to strengthen you. And um, we call this series Raising Parents because we believe um, our role is not just to teach kids how to be kids. I think a lot of people, a lot of parents, you know, raise their kids just to be kids, but you're really raising an adult. Mm -hmm. You're really raising somebody who's going to be a parent. And if you live long enough, you're raising somebody who's going to make decisions for you one day. You know, they're going to be making decisions for you. They're going to be deciding, you know, and making those decisions. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it, is, it is something, you know, sobering to really think about uh, because we want them, I don't want to raise my sons and daughters to grow up and be childish. I want them to own the responsibilities and good leaders take responsibility. So Joanne and I are uh, not perfect parents and you don't, God's not looking for perfect parents. God's looking for present parents. Amen. And you go, well, I'm not an absentee father. You don't have to leave home to be absent. You can be in the house and be absent. We can all be on our phones, not engaging, not talking, and watch how, you know, it slips away. And the next thing you know, they're teenagers, and now they're, yep. and you can't go back and put that back in. So let's start off with these verses here. Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way that they should go, that when they are old, they will not depart from it. You want me to keep on? Well, let's talk about that okay. for a moment. So train them up in the way that they should go that when they're old. So it talks about the beginning, mm-hmm. talks about the end, says nothing about the middle, yep. the messy middle. But if you, if you start it off right, um, it's going to end right. That's right. Um, there's going to be, how many of you, 
are in this house today and your parents started you off right and there was a part that was messy, but you're back here because of what was planted in you when you were a kid. Come on, amen? Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? And you're like, it just dawns on you one day. You're like, oh, <laughs> that's what mama meant. That's what daddy meant. That's, and all of a sudden you're like, okay, I need my kids to learn the word of God. I'm, I'm in a culture that's not pleasing the word of God. I've got to make some changes in my life. And what was invested into you is now bringing you back to God's house, bringing you back to the word of God and saying, I need to make changes in my life because of the things that were spoken into you as a child, right? And then read uh, Jeremiah 24, 7. I will give them a heart to know me. Let's talk about that. What's that? I mean, I pray that over my kids that they have a desire and a heart to want to grow in their relationship with God, that, they, that God reveals himself, to, reveals himself to them so that they are not just on our wings because, you know, we are the spiritual leaders in the home. Like, I want them to have a relationship with God on their own and that God reveals himself to them. And, I mean, can I say what happened last night? Absolutely. So last night, God answered one of those prayers for me. I may not make it through, so you might have to finish. Um, but our six-year-old, we were having our prayer time last night. And Victoria, who just Victoria, came out here. She just came out. And she comes to me and says, Mommy, um, when you were little, did you ask God to be your Savior? And I said, yeah, I did. did you? And then she asked me, did you tell Mimi, which is my mom? And I said, I'm sure I did. I don't remember, like, how it happened. And she goes, and I said, why, Victoria, do you want to ask God to be your Savior? And she's like, I've been wanting to but I wanted to do it with you. And so I had the opportunity last night to pray this, the salvation prayer with my daughter that God put in her heart to do. And we had such an incredible God moment last night. She was just crying. She cried for like an hour. She did. Uncontrollably. It was awesome. Like the Holy Spirit just came on her and she just cried uncontrollably. She couldn't stop crying. And, um, but I didn't grow up in church. So, and my parents are not pastors. And he did, and I always wanted my kids to experience that at a young age. I wanted them to, for God to reveal himself to them at a young age. So I, that has been a prayer of mine since, ever since she was born. Mm -hmm. So to see that manifest was just so awesome. Yeah, and there's, there's moments when we've prayed those prayers with the kids. You know, hey, let's all pray this prayer. But it's different because, and it's not happened to all of our kids uh, yet, but, but there, are, there are those of our kids who it, it just came out of the blue. Like I remember when Alexander got saved. I mean, we had prayed with him and talked mm -hmm. about Jesus and all that. But there, there just came this moment when the Holy Spirit came to him mm -hmm. and revealed himself to him. And all of a sudden, like, I mean, he was, he was like at the, at the dining room table, and he just he started breaking school. down crying and goes, I want to get saved, and was just crying uncontrollably, like tears running down his cheek. And, and that is different from saying, hey, let's talk about Jesus. and mm -hmm. let's pray. Because it has to be that that inner part, that knowing in their heart. That's and right. so one of the things that you do as a parent is praying over them and asking God to reveal himself. Now, nobody's going to be able to convince her that she's not saved and Jesus isn't real yeah. and the Holy Spirit's not real because she experienced the Holy Spirit. Right. Like God filled her with the Holy Spirit. And so most people get saved between the ages of 4 and 14. Most of you get saved between the ages of 4 and 14. That's why kids' ministry is so important in the body of Christ. It's so important in the body of Christ. Uh, so uh, you want to pray over your kids and say, God, reveal that. And then you want to cultivate an opportunity for it. Isaiah 54 and 13 says, all thy children will be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children. I think one of the things you've got to consider is what does success look like for you? What is success for your family? Well, we've determined that success for us is all of our kids, all of our grandkids, all our great grandkids spend eternity in heaven with us. Yep. Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. How much money was in the checking account, how many houses, how many cars. At the end of the day, see, young people don't get that. But as you get older, you're going to begin to realize you're going to leave here. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're, as you get older, even in your body, you begin to realize I'm not my body. And you begin to realize that what really matters is eternity. And making sure I'm focusing on eternity and I'm, and I'm making eternity a priority for my home and my children. What does success look like for you? And um, Psalms 127 and 3, why don't, why, don't, why, don't you, why don't you read that? 
Don't you see that children are God's best gift, the fruit of the womb, his generous legacy, like a, like a warrior's fruit of arrows are the children of a vigorous youth. Oh, how blessed are you parents with your quivers full of children. Your enemies don't stand a chance against you. You'll sweep them right off your doorstep. So children are like arrows in the hands of a mighty warrior. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about that in a moment. Um, but before we do, just please understand again, we have amazing God moments. And sometimes we, we try to have them and they're a disaster. You know, babies are screaming, you know, I'm like, quit farting. We're trying to pray, <laughs> you know, like, you know, I've got teenage boys, you know, so it's like, it's just hilarious <laughs> for them. So it's like, it's not always this amazing moment, but sometimes it is. And does anybody in here fish? Raise your hand if you fish. Does anybody here hunt? Raise your hand if you hunt. Anybody here go, any, any, anybody like to go shopping a lot? You're like a big person of shopping. <laughs> So sometimes, sometimes you go shopping and you find the deal. And other times you're like, I spent all day shopping and I didn't find anything, right? Sometimes you go fishing and you catch the fish of your dreams. Sometimes you caught nothing. Sometimes you go hunting and, you know, it was a great day hunting. Sometimes you caught nothing. So anybody who's like has to catch a fish every time they go fishing, guess what they won't do very long? Mm. Yep. If you have to like kill something every time you go hunting, guess what you're not going to do very long? So a part of hunting, a part of the experience and the joy of hunting is just hunting. A part of fishing, a lot people who love to fish, is not always catching the fish, it's just fishing. Sometimes in your, in your time with God, it's not like, oh, we caught the moment. It's, our, it's the joy of pursuing God mm -hmm. as a family. The joy of running after God as a family. The joy of like, oh my gosh, like last night was like this amazing God moment and the Holy Spirit came in our home and yep. one of our kids cried for an hour and got saved and God filled them with the Holy Ghost. That doesn't happen every night. Yep. But we can't go, oh, well, we're not going to do it if, if we're only going to do it when that happens. Mm -hmm. The reason that happens is because we pursue God every night. And, and most of the night she's just sitting there petting the dog. While yeah, we're she's just she's holding not even dog. paying attention, really. Yeah, it's just the consistency. Well, we had prayed. Yeah. I had already, we had already had a prayer time, and we prophesied and everything. And then I went to actually go get a shower and get ready for bed. And then she texts me while I'm in the shower. You need to come in here. Victoria's crying. God's moving on her. Mm -hmm. So then I get out of the shower real quick. I come in. She's like bawling uncontrolled because after everybody had kind of went into the rooms, she then came mm -hmm. to Joanne. She she didn't want to do it in front of everybody. She then went to Joanne and made that. And then the Holy Spirit just came on her. So the Holy Spirit started dealing with her. Mm -hmm. And that those are those God moments that you're like, the Holy Spirit did that. Yep. Because, you know, kids aren't trying, you know, when you're six years old, you're not trying to be on Instagram. I'm trying to be awesome and famous and I want to be. It, this is all genuine. This isn't like conjured up. There's no audience here. This is just God touching a child. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so special about mm -hmm. it. And, you know, as parents, too, you're going to get in bad moods. I mean, we get in bad moods. But one of the great things to do, try doing this. Next time you're in a bad mood, you come home, you're in a bad mood as mom or dad. Or you recognize you're in a bad mood. Or your spouse recognizes you're in a bad mood. <laughs> one of the great things to do is to ask your family to pray for you. Yes. Yeah. I'm serious. Just come home and say, look, mom or, or da dad's in a really bad mood today. I'm just really upset. I'm cranky. I don't think I slept good last night. I've got a headache or, you know, I've just had a hard day. I, I need all of my kids to come pray for me. I need you to pray for me that God will help me be in a better mood. Because you're modeling to them how they should respond when they're in a bad mood. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times our kids, when they get in a bad mood, leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. It's because when you're in a bad mood, leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. Yep. Your, your kids are going to do what they see. They're not going to do what you say. Kids are terrible. They're the worst at doing what you ask them to do. They, they suck at it. Mm -hmm. They're literally the worst at doing That's why you, all day you're like, didn't I just ask you to do this? Didn't I ask you to do this? Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes with kids, you're like, you know, when you first have kids, you're like, my kid's going to change the world. And <laughs> my kid's going to be so smart, and they're going to, like, do all these amazing things. And we were just sitting in the house the other day, and I asked one of my kids, I said, bring me a bottle of water. <laughs> and they got up, got a bottle of water, came back in the room, and gave it to someone else. 
And they're looking at him like, here, here, this take it. This consistently happens. I'm like, happens. they didn't ask you for this. <laughs> and you just think to yourself like, what did I do? What? Like, <laughs> I thought, you know, they were going to like, <laughs> you know, you're just like, what is going on here? And, and I don't know. It's, it, you got to ask your kids to pray for you because <laughs> they are going to do and be exactly what they see. They are, they are terrible at doing what you say, but they are amazing at doing what they see you do. And, what, and they will repeat what they hear you saying to other people. Yeah. That's why you got to be careful with your tone in the home because you don't think anything about your tone until your kids use it. Until your kids use your tone. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh my gosh, that's a terrible tone. You know, but that's the tone they hear. See, we have kids that cuss in kids ministry. Yeah. But they cuss because they're cussed at. You know, that's why you, I don't cuss ever. And the reason I don't ever cuss is be, even, even like, oh, nobody's around, I'm going to cuss. Is because if you do it privately, you might do it publicly one day or do it in front of your children one day. And I want to be the same person yeah. in front of my kids. You see, anything you can't do in front of your kids, like if you, like, like you're like, oh, I can do this sin as long as my kids aren't watching. That should tell you you shouldn't do it. Right. Does that make sense to you? If you're looking at things that you can't look at in front of your kids, you shouldn't be looking at it. Yep. And that's one of the things we teach in cell phone permit is parents modeling transparency. Most parents don't model transparency. They model privacy. Don't look at my phone. You can't have my password. Well, then what do you think the kid's going to do? But when parents are like, you can look at anything. Here, look. Look at my browsing history. Look at it. You can look at whatever you want to look at. Yep. Then they grow up see, They grow up having exposure and transparency modeled to them. Does that make sense? So, you know, it talks about arrows. Bring me those arrows there, Ethan, please. So, um, thank you. So, the Bible says that, like, arrows... Um, in Psalms 127, 4, like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children uh, born in our youth. Now, most people are aware of a spiritual weapon. Now, if I said, use your spiritual weapon, what would most people say? The sword. How many people have heard the word of God is the sword of the spirit? Raise your mm-hmm. hand if you ever heard that. Okay, so you know the word. Of, most people think that's your only spiritual weapon. It's not. You have a second spiritual weapon. And they're arrows. They're your children. And your children are the long-range weapon in the body of Christ. Most of you want to just fight hand-to-hand combat. Your children are a spiritual weapon That's right. in the body of Christ. They are the long-range weapon in the body of Christ. When you shoot an arrow, it hits people you never see. Your children will impact the body of Christ. They will impact the world and impact people you will never meet. Now, when it comes to an arrow, um, you know, most people think of an arrow, they go get an arrow like I got these. You know, you go to Dick's Sporting Goods and get, you know, you just buy arrows that somebody else made. And that's what most people want us to do. Mm-hmm. They just want to pay the church or pay a school to make their arrows. Mm-hmm. But in Bible days when this was written, you couldn't go to Dick's Sporting Goods and buy arrows. <laughs> you couldn't go on Amazon and buy arrows. You had to make your own arrows. So the warrior, the guy shooting the arrows, was the guy making the arrows. You didn't pay somebody to make them. And we have gotten into this mentality where we're like, oh, we'll we'll just hire, we'll just pay a school to to teach them. Mm -hmm. We'll just pay a church, I'll just give an offering, the church can do it. Nope. That's not how it works. You make your arrows. You put them together. You're making sure the feathers are right. You're putting the tip on it. You're making sure it's right. And the thing about arrows is you don't have a lot of them. 
You don't have an unlimited amount. How many kids you got? You got three arrows. Three arrows. How many kids you got? You got four arrows. How many kids you got? Three arrows. So you don't have a lot of them. Make sure you aim them right. You don't have an unlimited amount. Some of you got one arrow, two arrows, three, four. You know, mo most, most people don't have a lot of these. Yeah. And, and you got one arrow, two arrows, three arrows, you're going to let somebody else make them? You're going to let somebody else form them? You're going to let somebody else educate them and train them and instruct them? And then you're going to try and shoot them? That's why when you go to shoot them, it goes crooked, it goes here, it goes... See, a, the, a term, sin is actually an archery term. So if, if, you, if you shoot archery, you're familiar with the term sin. Because when you miss the target or the bullseye, it's called a sin. In archery, it's called a sin. Because it's like God has you like an arrow and he pulls you back and he wants to aim you. But because of sin, we veer to the left and we veer to the right and we miss the mark. A lot of our children are missing the mark because we're not making the arrows. You put your kids in the school system. You put your kids, well, I'm just going to let them do it. I'm telling you guys right now, I think, well, first of all, let me say, so I don't want anybody to get, you know, I don't want to offend our teachers because first of all, I think every teacher in America is massively underpaid. Yes. Amen. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yes. Like massively underpaid. The second of all is, you know, our public school system is, be is becoming a disaster oh, yeah. in terms of what they're forcing on our children. And if you don't get involved, if you don't get invested yep. as a parent and get rid of this mentality of like, I'm going to let somebody else do it. I'm going to let somebody, I'm going to train somebody else to do it. And, and we've got this mentality of like, we can't do it. God gave them to you. Mm -hmm. You. Well, I'm busy working. I'm busy this. I'm busy that. You always have enough time to do what God's called you to do. That's right. Amen. So if you don't have enough time, you need to reevaluate. Maybe you're doing a bunch of stuff that you're not supposed to be doing. Because you always have enough time to do what God's called you to do. And so if you don't have enough time to invest in your kids that God gave you, that means you are misappropriating time. And you're now going to use the money you worked for that you should have been spending with the kids. You're going to use that time to now hire somebody else to make your arrows. Yep. It's so quiet. <laughs> Am I helping anybody? So true. And, you know, most people treat church and, and school like it's, it's sporting good. That's why we started Creative Academy. Yeah. And I'm proud to say we've got almost 130 students signed up for Creative That's Academy so awesome. this fall, K through 12. Well, I'm busy. I just can't teach my kid. Oh, I'm going to challenge it. I'm not going to just, you, you come into the wrong person. <laughs> if you think I'm backing down on this, because I'm telling you, you have to invest in your children. You do. You do. It's not my job. Nowhere in this Bible are Pastor Joanna and I called to do kids ministry. I mean, we are. We do it, but it's not <laughs> in the Bible that we should do it. You're supposed to do it. Amen. Jesus taught the parents, and he blessed the kids. Y'all want us to teach the kids and bless you. Yep. <laughs> They're your kids. And I, be I believe that we're going to have to do, an, like, we're going to be held accountable to the Lord. Yes. For our children when we do get to heaven. That's your church. Mm -hmm. That's your church. You're the pastor. Like, I got to give an account to God for all of you. You got to give an account for your family. Yep. Did you train them? Did you lead them? Did you guide them? Did you direct them? What did you, what did you do with the gifts I gave you? Every one of us are going to have to answer that question. Yep. What did you do with the gifts I gave you? And children are a gift. They are. Let me ask you this question. Do your kids know that they're a gift? Or do they think they're a bother? Do your, are your children convinced that they are a gift from God to you? They've got to they've be convinced that they're a gift. You have to remind them that they are a gift. Mm -hmm. 
You're a gift from God. Hannah prayed and cried out to God, God, give me a child, at least I die. Samuel, Samuel's name literally means heard from God. That God heard your prayer, that God blessed you with a child. And they are not a burden. They are a gift. They are your long-range weapon. And if you don't aim them, if you never release them into battle, then it's as if you had no arrows at all. Yeah. If you keep them in your, your quiver, then it's as if you had no arrows at all. Your children, I'm telling you, you need to empower your children to get in the fight. Mm -hmm. Teach them to pray and prophesy. Teach them to be strong in their, in their word. I mean, we do things all the time. Like, well, we, we do make prayer fun. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. You're pretty good at that. No, I'm not. You're good at it. <laughs> You're really good You're at it. You're the fun parent in our house. No, you just, you just have babies on you all the time. <laughs> you know, but like, you got to make prayer fun. Like, if prayer's boring, if you have a hard time praying with just you, you're probably going to suck at making <laughs> prayer fun for your family. Because you don't want to do it. But you got to make prayer fun. Like, go on Google Earth and zoom in on grandmom's house. We're going to pray for grandmom and granddad. Zoom in on their house. Let's pray for them. Zoom in on your church. We're going to pray for our church. Mm -hmm. We're going to pray for the White House. Zoom in on the White House. We're going to pray for the White House. We're going to pray for, we're going to pray for the Capitol. We're going to pray for the, the, um, uh, the, the state capitol, uh, St. Paul. We're, we're going to pray for whatever. Make it fun. We do this thing. We do a 60-second preach. That's fun. Tell them about 60-second preach. Uh, everybody has to go find an object in the house, and then they have to come back and preach on it for 60 seconds. And it's fun to see the things that they come up with that fast. you got to preach on it for 60 seconds. So they all start preaching, you know, on some object, you know. And so, like, it could be anything. You know, it could be, like, a slinky. And you're like, you know, uh, it's like you're this slinky. And, you know, sometimes it's like we fall apart. But because of God, you know, he brings us back together. And it looks like, you know, our life is falling apart. But with the Holy Spirit, God will bring you back. And they just preach on that for 60 seconds. And now you're talking about God and you're engaging God. And you're using objects in the house to talk about their faith. you got to make it fun. I do that with the staff sometimes. We do staff chapel. I'm like, run through the building. Everybody run through the building and get an object. You got to preach on it for 60 seconds. <laughs> and they're running through here grabbing something. They got to <laughs> preach on it for 60 seconds. It's like just, you, you've got to create fun moments in your home with God like you do everything else. It can't just be, you know, okay, this. I think Jesus was fun. I agree. I think we make it so like serious and it has to be like this special moment. And it's like, no, just talk to God all day long. That's what I tell my kids. Just talk to him all day long. Find the blessings that he gives us all day long. Don't, I mean, it's not like this, you have to carve out this certain time. You should, but it doesn't have to be this very like, okay, this moment and everything has to be perfect and then God can come. You know, God should be with you all day long. God's with my kids all day long. And when something happens to them, oh, let's pray. Liliana hurt herself yesterday. Let's pray. God, heal your legs, you know, take the pain away. And she does and she feels fine. But that's just because we're teaching her how to go to God for everything, even the little things. It's so, it's so true. And to prophesy, to declare. If you want to know what you sound like praying, ask your kids to pray. Yeah. Your kids pray like you. They sure do. If you start prayers with, I pray, then your kids say, I pray. If you start prayers with Father God, mm -hmm. then they Father God. So we... we we like to prophesy, to declare. We want them to be courageous and bold. You've heard me say this before. Do not speak shyness over your children. Oh, they're just shy. Don't say that because shyness can be a curse that can rob them of possibilities and opportunities. There's not a parent in here that doesn't want their child to be bold. And we used to do that with Victoria. We stopped. Yeah, because and she can look. She can, her. you know, that's just her natural. If you leave her alone, that's her natural tendency. Mm -hmm. It's a tree grown like this. So you got to you got to bend the tree. you got to form them. That's why God gave them to you. you got to form that like a will. They all got a will. Mm -hmm. Well, We all come here screaming and yelling to get what we want. 
I'm hungry. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, I got food from yelling. <laughs> and you have to be taught, no, we're not going to yell and scream to get what we want. You know, we're going to use our words. Sometimes our kids will come in, they're upset, and I'll say, we'll talk when your tone matches mine. Come on. No, you're not there yet. You're better. Keep going. Yeah. Now you work on their tone. Okay, now I'm going to work with you on your words. So when they're real little, you've got to give them tone and words. If you say what to your kids, your kids say what? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. If you want your kids to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, you have to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am to them. You can't say what to them and then, no, say yes, ma'am, back mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Because re remember, they're terrible at doing what you tell them to do. But they're great at doing what they hear and see you do. So if you want your kids to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, you've got to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Praise God. So, because there, there's a call in their life. We teach them to prophesy. So one of the things we'll do, so just like last night, what we'll do is, is this helpful? I've just given you practical things of how we do it. You've got to teach your kids to prophesy. Mm -hmm. And they've got to prophesy over each other. Teach your kids to prophesy over their siblings. It will cut down on sibling rivalry as they get older. And prophesy over all of them. Every Father's Day, I give all of my kids and, and Pastor Joanne a gift. I don't, I don't receive on Father's Day. I give everybody a gift on Father's Day. You do receive. Like what I'm, I'm not saying you don't give me anything on Father's Day. I didn't mean it like that. What I'm saying is my focus isn't to receive. Yeah. I'm sorry. My focus isn't to receive. My focus is to give on Father's Day. Because that's the one day of the year that I have the most influence. The attention's on me. So what, all I want is a father's influence. I really don't care for a gift. I, what I want is influence. And so I use that day and I write a prophetic word over them for the year that they keep in their room. Mm -hmm. And I give uh, Pastor Joanna a prophetic word. So I give them a prophetic word for the year. And I pray over them. I prophesy over them. I give them all a gift on Father's Day. But you want your kids to begin to prophesy over each other. So one of the ways we'll do it is we just, we just make our family very comfortable at learning how to, like, hear from God. You have to practice hearing from God. They practice playing house and playing with dolls and playing sports and all that kind of stuff. They practice everything else. We practice the presence of God. That's right. We practice it. So at night, uh, just last night even, I'll, I'll get a guitar. We'll put music on. Last night I played a guitar. So I'm playing the guitar a little bit. It sounds terrible. Oh, and it sounds great. Well, thank you. <laughs> and uh, so I'm playing the guitar. And I'll say, okay, everybody, I want us to take a couple of minutes. It was literally only like a minute, maybe that, 30 seconds. Yeah. And I'll say, I want everybody, to, I want you to say the name of whoever comes to your mind. Whoever comes to your mind, I want you to say their name out loud. And so I'm just playing the guitar and I'm saying, Lord, just give us, speak to us about who you want us to minister to today. Who do you want us to minister to on Sunday? You know, we, we believe we're all ministers. And so... And I stop and I go, okay, everybody tell me if you got, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. And so they, they all had somebody last night. They said, I said, okay, great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the guitar again for another minute and I'm going to pray. Now, tell me if you see them doing anything. All right? So let me ask you guys a question. What is God's first language? Is it English? Is it Hebrew? Or is it visions and dreams? Well, Hopefully it's not Hebrew, because I don't know if any of us speak Hebrew. <laughs> uh, and it's not English, because God's not American. Although I think America is the greatest nation that God ever let live on the face of this earth. And I say that as a son of, son of an immigrant, daughter of an immigrant. We're first generation Americans. If you don't love America, our ushers will drive to the airport. You can go to any nation you want to go to today. <laughs> Travel the world. You'd be glad to come back. Yep. Okay, um, so uh, it's not English. God's first language is visions and dreams. So why then, when you ask God to speak to you, are you listening for English? If God's first language is not English, if God's first language is vision and dreams, most of the people in this Bible, God did not speak to in English. That's right. He actually gave them a vision and a dream. Even to save Jesus' life, he spoke to his parents in a dream. And if Jesus' parents needed a dream from God, 
to direct his life, how much more do we need a dream and a vision from God to direct our kids' lives? So it's a vision and a dream. So God's going to speak to you or your kids in a vision and a dream. So when you go to your kids, do not do not go to your kids and say, what did God say? Okay. <laughs> what is God saying to you? What is God saying to you? I don't hear anything. Mm-hmm. I don't hear anything. God must not speak to me. I don't think God's real. Yep. <laughs> because you're, you're, you're sending them down a path that's not the right path. You're asking them to hear English from God. That's not God's first language. God's going to speak to them in a vision and a dream. I can't get one amen. amen. So then you need to go to them when they wake up and say, what did you dream about last night? What did you dream about last night? Well, let's write it down. Maybe God's speaking to us about it. Mm-hmm. So then we, so we're playing the guitar. Let me go back to my story. We're playing the guitar. And I said, okay, what do you guys got? So I'll only share one. So um, Nicholas thought of Riley. So this was free. She doesn't even know this. Nope. So Nicholas said, Riley came to me. And, and then when we prayed, I said, well, what do you see Riley doing? He says, I see Riley carrying these giant, uh, these giant bags of salt. She's like carrying these giant bags of salt. And she's like, she's like really tired, but she keeps doing it. Mm-hmm. She's like exhausted, but she's just going to keep doing it. She just keeps doing it. And we began to talk about that, like, you know, how the word of God is like salt, mm-hmm. you know? And we ask God every week to make our words salt. Whew, I feel the Holy Ghost. This is what I'm talking about it. Like salt and light, you know? And I said, you know, I'm going to share that with her tomorrow. So now all of a sudden, like, just from spending time with God, he now comes to church on Sunday as a minister. Mm-hmm. He's not just some kid coming to church because his parents are making him come to church. He's like, I've spent time with God. I've heard from God. I have a word from God to encourage an adult. Mm -hmm. Because God showed me in a a vision you were carrying this salt and you felt like quitting, but you shouldn't quit, just keep going. And little did he know, because we don't talk to our kids about people, is, you know, Riley has been feeling the weight of the teenagers here at Y and Z when she's speaking, because the things that they're walking through is a lot. And so, I mean, we've been having conversations on a weekly basis about it. And she's like, you know, Pastor Joanne, how do I do this? Like, what do I say to that? Like, you got to walk me through this. Like, so this is a constant conversation that she's having. And she's just like, I don't even know what to say sometimes because the things that our teenagers are walking through, is just mind blowing. Like, I'm just like, wow, I can't believe that, that that's happening in our schools and our youth groups and all these, what teenagers do. It's just, it's, it's amazing to me. They need God. They need the Holy Spirit. And they need the truth because a lot of them do not know the truth. I want to kind of end talking about this. I want to talk about Samson. And the Bible says some interesting things about Samson. It says that Samson took a Nazarite vow. That an angel came to Samson's mother before he was born. It said that he's to take a Nazarite vow. And a Nazarite vow meant he wasn't allowed to cut his hair. But a lot of people don't realize that it went beyond that. The other thing he wasn't allowed to do was he wasn't allowed to um, have any fruit of the vine. So he wasn't allowed to have wine or grape juice, and he wasn't allowed to eat grapes. Anybody eat some grapes on the way in today? Raise your hand if you ate some grapes on the way in today. He wasn't allowed to eat grapes. And you think... You know, think about that. They're out in the Middle East. It's hot. Yep. It's, they're in a desert. And your kid's going, can I please have a haircut? Every other kid's got a haircut. Mm-hmm. What is the big deal about me having a haircut? Why can't I eat a grape? It was very specific. It said he wasn't allowed to eat grapes like this or dried grapes. Mm-hmm. Couldn't even have raisins. That's what it says. It literally says, you know, moist grapes are dry grapes. We're not allowed to have it. And you think about that for a moment, and, and everybody else is eating grapes. All the other kids are eating grapes. All the other kids are getting their hairs cut, right? They're getting their hair cut, eating grapes. He's not allowed to have it. Every other kid's got a cell phone. 
Every other kid's on Instagram. Every other kid, you know, their parents let them date. Their parents let them. See, you got to be careful just because, the, just because something's normal in the world. If God's got a call on your kid, if God's got a, a call of God on their life, an anointing on their life, a purpose on their life, you can't go as a parent with what's normal in the world. That's right. Just because it's normal doesn't mean it's okay for your kid. That's why you got to know what God has, what, what is God's call for your child? Because not only did, did he have to take, not only could he not have his hair cut or eat grapes, his mom didn't. She had to take the Nazarite vow also. So just because, see, what you got, what are you, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying when, you're, when God's got a call of God on your kid's life, you have to make certain convictions in your own life mm-hmm. because of the convictions they're going to have to have in their life. And a lot of parents say, well, I'm going to drink, you know, it, it doesn't bother me. But your kid struggles with it. How can you drink and your kid struggles with it? You've got to take that conviction on. Yes. If your kid struggles with this, you've got to take that conviction on because of the call of God on their life. Not, hey, y'all can't watch this. Go to your room. Mom and dad are going to watch. No. No. If we can't watch it as a family, we shouldn't be watching it. That's right. Because of the call of God on their life, you've got to have the convictions on your own life. She had to have it once she conceived. She, could, she had to stop eating grapes once she conceived him because of the gifts she was carrying. And you know, he got mad. You know, he flounced. You know, he screamed. You know, he cried. You know, he was made fun of. You know, he may have got bullied. And, she, and mom, why can't I have a haircut? I want my hair to look like the other kids. Why do I have to do this? Why do I have to do this? It's not fair. You make me do things that you don't, other parents, their kids, their mom and dads don't make them do that. Why can't I have a great? I'm telling you no, because I'm protecting the yes that God has for your life. And if I say yes, then God's going to say no. Sometimes you have to say no to protect the yes that God has. Because if you say yes, then God's going to say no. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. you got to stand up for it. No, we're not getting a cell phone. Nobody with social media wishes they got it sooner. And kids are getting it, what, eight, nine? Kindergarten. Got a phone. I'm on social media. I'm on Instagram. You're unlocking doors. You're unlocking doors. You're unlocking doors. You're literally, when you look at pornography, you're literally like, it's like demons coming off the screen and attaching themselves to your life. That's right. And if you could see the foul, fang, slimy, disgusting, evil, wicked, horrifying, demonic things that literally attach themselves to your spirit. And our kids are being indoctrinated with it. We have to take a stand. We do. We have to stand up for that. And sometimes, if that means I have to get a, a, a gab phone, a, a, a not as smart a phone, then that's what I have to do because my kids can't have it. I'm going to make certain restrictions because I'm going to walk in whatever convictions my kids have to walk in. And it's easy. Everybody's coming in. Oh, it's just grapes. Everybody's eating a grape. Nobody. What if, you're, what if the call of God on your life was based on whether you ate a grape or not? It's just a grape. God's love. Mm-hmm. But God's also truth. And God's also God of covenant. That's right. So you have to make hard decisions as a parent. That's why I tell parents, you need to get your kids into self-impairment. You've got to get them into self-impairment. You've got to get these kids. Do not give your kids a phone and not get them into self-impairment. It's, 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 it's going to be the, one of the worst decisions that you can make. Because the kids, we've done enough now that the data is starting to come in. The kids who, are already, who already have the phones, it's, it is like so hard to change them. 
because they've already developed bad habits. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is get them the information, this information before they get the phones so they don't develop those bad habits because they're on it eight, nine hours a day. The Mayo Clinic says they should be on it no more than two hours a day. They, and they don't realize it. So I, I'll throw one of my kids under the bus. Sorry, if you're in the room. Um, we were having this discussion with, with one of our kids about playing the Xbox because we're not big into them gaming either. And I was like, you've been on it all day, even though I was like in and out of the house. I was like, I know you've been on it all day. Well, I just got the report for last weekend and it showed me how long they were on it for that day. And I said, do you realize that you were on it for this many hours? And they were like, no, no, I, there's no way, there's no way. I'm like, it recorded you. It shows me how long you were on your Xbox. He's like, I just this don't is think that's problem. true. This is a problem that you don't recognize. What do you, you think, this is a big scam <laughs> that Xbox has to like get kids in trouble? And so it's like, they don't even realize that they're on it for that long. Because he, he genuinely did not think that he was on it for that long. But he was. And it's just, I think they just don't, once you're in it, you don't realize. Even me, I'm just looking at my phone all, at night and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been on this for like an hour. Like, what is wrong with me? I need to go to bed. And I think we just don't realize how quickly the time goes when you're on it. Yeah, you've got to be a steward over it. You've got to get ahead of it. And that's why your church is making these resources available to you. That's why we made the academy available to you. That's why we've made cell phone available to you. And please wake up. Like, yes. wake up. Wake up, parents, about this. You've got to get involved with your kids. The enemy is playing for keeps with your kids. And, and you coming home going, all right, let's just pray a little prayer. Have a good night. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. They're getting indoctrinated. Like, you better teach these kids to prophesy and to declare. One of the things that happens, um, you can come play something for me. But one of the things that happens if your kids go to this church is starting at kindergarten uh, or starting in the nursery, we collect a folder on all the kids. And the teachers start writing prophetic words over them in a folder. So that when they turn 18, they have 18 years of prophetic words spoken over their life. So when they turn 18, they're like, who am I? Or I'm struggling with my identity or whatnot. Here's 18 years of prophetic words. How many of you right now as an adult would value having 18 years of prophetic words spoken over your life in a folder? Because you've, you've got to start prophesying this over them and speaking this over them. Your children will become what you declare. They will become what they see you do. And so we wanted to take this first session today in this series. Does this help anybody? Yes. Come on, amen. amen. And just tonight, so just tonight, take, take, the, uh, take the last 30 minutes. Do, it, do this before you go to bed. Don't do anything else before you go to bed. It'll mess it up. Mm -hmm. But before you go to bed, take that last 30 minutes and just say, we're going to spend this last 30 minutes talking about God. We're going to start praying. We're going to start prophesying. We're going to hear from God. What dreams or what visions? Who is God, what is God showing you? And even with our teenagers, you know, our teenagers are like, I don't know if I believe in God or what's happening. You got to go to your teen and say, is there a time that you ever remember believing God is real? Yeah, there was a time I believe, I, I did believe God was real. Okay, let's talk about that. You know, what is God showing you now? What is God saying now? Because teenagers, one of the ways you want to navigate them is ask them questions to come to the answer on their own. Mm -hmm. You got to ask them good questions to come to the answers on their own. Um, not just tell them, because teenagers are, you know, they're like bigger bodies, you know, or they're, they're two-year-olds with hair. <laughs> you know, but why are you saying that, Pastor? Because a two-year-old's like, have you ever tried to feed a two-year-old? Give me this, I'll do it. Give me, I, I want to do it. I wanna, they don't, they want to do everything. I want to get, get myself dressed. I want to do, I'm going to get, I want I don't need you to feed me. I don't, I'm getting myself dressed. It's the same thing, but they're just older now. <laughs> they don't want you to tell them anything. They want to do it all on their own. I told my 15-year-old the other day, he was correcting me. <laughs> correcting me. I'm like, you're, home, you're a homeless person. <laughs> you're, you, you see the guy on the road over here? He was homeless. That's what, you are that person. It's, I have just taken you in. <laughs> you're a homeless person. Okay, and I'm like, you should hurry up and leave the house, you know, while you know everything, before you get stupid like me. Yeah. 
So, so you gotta like ask them questions. Well, like, is that, what does God's word say about that? You know, well, when do you remember being, God being real to you? And, you know, what has God said? What does God's word say about that? And, you know, well, where did you hear that from? And why do you believe that? You know, well, where did the person on YouTube get that from? And, and what makes you, why would you value that person over this person's opinion? And, and you know, what, do you know how to pray? And, and, and you know, I'll just, I'll just let you guys know, one of the things that we're big on here in our kids' ministry at our church is Bible characters. Talk to your kids about Bible characters. Just don't talk about the Bible. Talk about Bible characters because all the Bible characters point to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, I, was, I was reading an article on sports teams, and a lot of people are losing their interest in sports teams because they're changing the players so fast. Because most of us, when we think of a team or we think of a sport, yeah. we think of a player. We love that sport because we love that player, right? And once, once they change the players and whatnot, we, we tend to, we can lose our love for the, the game. Over the last 10 years, churches have not done a good job, maybe even 20 years, about talking about the characters. They've taught concepts. Like, we're just going to teach about love and peace and forgiveness, but they've not taught the characters. Mm-hmm. See, most of you, if you grew up in church, you are in love with the, the Word of God because you're in love with, the, you love David. That's why we name our kids after Bible characters. A lot of you are named after Bible characters. Now we've got a generation, people don't name their kids after Bible characters because they didn't grow up being in love with the characters. And now they're not in love with the word of God because they're not in love with the characters in the Bible that point to Jesus. It's not about just talking about love and grace and peace. You gotta get your kids in love with the characters of the Bible. That's why some of you are called Joshua and David and Jonathan and Rachel and Esther, some of you, Naomi, because, because your parents fell in love with the characters mm-hmm. in the word of God. And you've just been taught concepts. That's why you've got to get the characters so your kids fall in love with the word of God. Does that help anybody? Come on, amen. So we want to pray for every home. We want to pray for every home. But let's pray for all the parents. So if you're here right now, you're a parent, would you stand up? We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for all the parents. I don't care how old those kids are. I have heard you never stop being a parent. That's right. We're going to pray for them. And then we've got, we've got a big thing to do. It's going to take five minutes, if that. We have a lot of kids backstage in caps and gowns. And they are graduating their kids' class today. And we're going to take two minutes and celebrate them. Is that okay? They're really excited about it. But I want to pray for all the parents. So just lift your hands like this. You don't have to lift them high. But Father, right now in Jesus' name, I pray for every parent. God, I pray that you'd give them wisdom right now in Jesus' name. That you'd reveal your plan and purpose. The gifts that you have placed in every child begin to show to that parent. Begin to show the parent the convictions they need to take on. That they need to establish in their home because of what you've called that child, that son and daughter to do. Forgive us of laziness. Forgive us of slothfulness. We repent of it. And Father, we will make our arrows. We will get involved and invested in the lives of our children. I pray, God, that you would raise the influence that every grandparent has right now. That their voice into their adult children would grow. I pray for every single parent pray, God, that you would double and triple their sleep. God, that you would give them wisdom, that you give them the strength they need for the season that they're in. And Lord, I pray that everything they put their hand to would prosper. I prophesy prophetic words into the homes that they will raise ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I bring down dysfunction and division in homes because the greatest gift we can give our children is a healthy marriage. I speak life into these families. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, if you believe that, give God a big praise.